Good afternoon. Thanks for joining us here at 430. We've been telling you about a new Marquette University Law School poll of Wisconsin voters for weeks. Today it's here. The results released this afternoon. It's a dead heat. 50-50 split between Joe Biden and Donald Trump among registered voters in this battleground state. It was 51-49 Trump in the last poll of state voters in April. But among likely voters, the president holds a slight edge over the former president. A reversal from April. Same numbers. And in the Senate race, Senator Tammy Baldwin leads Republican challenger Eric of the 5247 among both registered and likely voters. Now those are the headlines. Let's dive deeper as we always do with the director of the third ranked poll in the entire country, Dr. Charles Franklin. Okay, Dr. Franklin, let's start with this. There was not a lot of movement from April to now with the top two candidates in the presidential race, but when you add in those other candidates, we did see some movement. In fact, there was a lot for RFK Jr. Still not guaranteed to be on the ballot here in the state, right? So what did you see with him, and how do you think that's going to impact the other candidates? Yeah, there are a couple of things. The, the third-party candidates took a little more away from Biden this time. Uh, it's tied with just the head-to-head, -head, but Trump is ahead by three in the multi-way race. Um, he was ahead by one last time, so while the head-to-head -head has tightened, the multi-candidate race has moved Trump slightly ahead. What's going on, though, that's really interesting is that Kennedy is falling across all partisan groups. He's down with Democrats, where he was never strong, down with independents quite a bit and down with Republicans. The net effect of that is that his support has dropped from 17% in January to 13% in April to just 8% in this poll. More Republicans were voting for Kennedy than Democrats were in our April poll. But this month, it's dead even between them Kennedy takes 6% from Republicans and 6% from Democrats. So relatively speaking, that has helped Trump a little bit because he's not losing quite as many votes to Kennedy as he was two months ago. Dr. Franklin, it also appears independents might be helping uh, Donald Trump here because if you still look at just independents, even RFK is, is polling well ahead of Joe Biden. And if you just make it a two horse race, uh, Donald Trump has has a pretty good advantage at independence. So if those independents can't vote for RFK, at least right now, the data would suggest they might go towards Donald Trump. Yeah, independents are pretty negative towards Biden, both in job approval and in favorability to him. Uh, and in terms of the vote split, more independents are supporting Trump rather than Biden. It did not change much at all between April and now, where Trump has been leading with independence in both of those polls. But in earlier polls, Biden was a little bit ahead with independence. All right. Some of this movement, of course, taking place. Uh, this is the first poll you've conducted since Donald Trump's felony convictions. Uh, how did that, do you think, impact numbers here? And maybe yeah. uh, one side looks at it and doesn't think they impacted it enough. And the other one says... We're in pretty good shape. Yeah. Um, I don't think that we saw much impact of the conviction on May 30th. What we do see is Trump's favorable percentage went down two points. His unfavorable went up one point. That's inside the margin of error kind of movement. The other thing that we saw is that 54% said they believe Trump was, in fact, guilty. But in our national poll in May during the trial, but before the end of it, we also found 54% thought Trump had done mm -hmm. something illegal. And so I think this is a case where people's expectations were already baked in. And, and there are still sizable chunks of the electorate that say they don't believe he was guilty. The jury made a mistake in that case. What else has been baked in for months, certainly, is unfavorability, right? I mean, both these candidates, every candidate's underwater. Uh, Joe Biden is negative 18 in the, in the margin. I think President or former President Trump is uh, negative 16. This is interesting. I, wa I want to float this to you because these double haters, everybody wants to know where they're going to go, right? Because there are a lot of them out there. The Washington Post did an article recently on double haters, and they focused, Dr. Franklin, on Hudson, Wisconsin, because the margin there in 2020, yes. I think you probably read this, was 155 bo votes but nearly double that voted for somebody else. They also pointed out that in the state of Wisconsin in 2020, 57,000 people voted for someone other than the top two. 
And keep in mind, the margin was just 21,000. So your job is to identify where those double haters might go. What did you find? Yeah, at the moment, the double haters, so-called, are leaning towards Biden when you push them to choose between the two candidates they don't like. Unsurprisingly, when you give them other candidates, Kennedy, Stein, West, and, and uh, the third party candidates, then you see a lot of those negative to both Biden and Trump going to one of the third party candidates. The big question is, will that sustain itself through the fall? To, to put that in perspective, in 2020, about 12% disliked both Biden and Trump. Now it's 17%. But in 2016, it was in the high 20s for most of the year between Clinton and Trump, fell off to the, high, the low 20s by the end of the campaign in the fall. So this year's double haters are a larger group than they were in 2020, but still a smaller group than where they were in 2016. But 2016 was a recent high water mark for third party voting. We'll see if that shakes out again the same way in 2024. Let's flip now to the Senate race. When you did not press respondents to choose a candidate, they could choose undecided. What did you find and what does that tell you about Eric Hovde, who no longer is as much of an unknown as he was back in April? Yeah, it's 45 for Baldwin, 38 for Hovde with 17 percent undecided. That's similar to what it was in April when it was 18% undecided. So not a lot of change in the undecideds. Baldwin up by seven on this measure. Uh, when we push those undecideds and say, if you had to choose, what would you do? Then it's Baldwin up by five. But Hovde is getting better known. In April, 56% said they didn't know enough about him to have an opinion. That's down to 44% now. He has gotten a little bit more net negative. His unfavorables went up a little bit more than his favorables did over these last two months. Well, then he's but a again, true politician, right? <laughs> he fits yes. right in with everybody well, else. Now. You know, really, we have so few people that are viewed positively. Tammy Baldwin by just one percentage point. Um, Tony Evers is the one with a fairly significant net positive. Every other politician we've asked about, Democrat or Republican or Independent, has a net unfavorable opinion right now. All right. Well, tomorrow we're going to have more news from the MU Law School poll. You're going to pull national voters. We'll hear the results of that in terms of the conviction and how it affected them. We'll look forward to that. Dr. Franklin, thank you as always. All good. Thank you.